I was a drugged out Sunday school teacher for months. Before Corona shut my church down, I was abusing Percocet, Gabapentin and alcohol just about every single day, especially Perks on Sundays when I would teach the children. I remember one Sunday, coming down from a ecstasy roll as I was talking to the kids about God's love. Pupils the size of discs in the church house. Multiple Sundays, I took Percocet before arriving and puked my brains out in the bathroom, 10 minutes before service started. I feel terrible about this because I signed an agreement to refrain from abusing drugs while being in the position to teach the kids but, obviously, I broke that agreement, continually for months. I've been clean for 4 months now but the guilt still eats me up. Thank you everyone for taking time to comment on this post. For those maybe wondering about the classroom environment, I'd like to provide more context. It was primarily kids younger than 5 years old. Very sweet, curious kiddos. We have had some of the best convos. We'd color and draw first to get them settled in, then dance to some worship songs. We'd watch a short cartoon lesson, have snack, and then free time until their parents came to pick them up. Part of the guilt slash shame I didn't mention was that I wasn't fully there with them. I mean, I did the best I could before the pills but I felt inadequate because I was so anxious, trying to cope with my then unknown slash unresolved trauma and social anxiety. However, on the perk slash gabas, I felt I was more relaxed and less on edge and I believed that was good for everyone. I truly believed I was a better person and more present because I no longer felt any of my anxiety or emotional pain. What a slippery slope opiates are. I'm not justifying my actions, simply giving more context to my situation. I am coping much more healthily now. It's hard hard work. But I just look forward to the day I'm a better and more present me. Again, thank you all for your incredibly kind comments. I wasn't expecting them at all. As a non-American I am horrified at the way political party voters are so hostile towards each other. Watching all that's happening in the US has left me with no other conclusion than that Americans are the most disrespectful when it comes to other opinions except exclusively their own in most cases on the individual level. For fuck's sake can't you just accept that if someone wants to vote for Biden or that if someone wants to vote for Trump that is their right and doesn't give you the right to completely shit on them calling them Nazis and communists. Can you not see how this is ripping your nation apart and will create social problems for decades to come? The way everyone is acting is so dramatic, uncivilized and childish on both sides that this regardless of who wins could cause a real civil war. No one wants that have some respect for other people's opinions and just because someone has a different one to you doesn't give you the right to mock, shit on them or publicly ridicule them if you are thinking that will make them want to join your side, you are wrong they may pretend to join your side but when it comes to voting day they will be voting anonymously with new passion against you for your disrespect towards them. Respect others opinions. I destroyed over $1,500 worth of Third Reich artifacts. I've loved the army and military collecting ever since I was a kid. But during my teen years I had believed in some pretty bad conspiracy theories and started to collect a lot of Nazi military over $1,500 worth of armbands, flags, etc. As a person of color it obviously didn't go well with my family but I always told them they're just artifacts with bad history but to tell the truth I liked them a lot. Also whenever I went to a convention to buy and sell these things I would meet real extremists or were very open about their views and that made me pretty uncomfortable when you're a 16 year old brown kid talking to skinheads with Nazi tattoos. Check my post history if you want to see. After a really really bad psychotic episode one decided it would be for the best to not just get rid of them but to not let them get in the hands of anyone else. I gave them all to a pastor friend and he destroyed all of them. Now I know they could have ended up in a museum but there is enough of that stuff out there already. It felt better just to destroy them. I'm still a military collector however I really cut back on that hobby and got into more mainstream ones I guess. I can finally call myself a woman. After years of living in the body of a man, I have gone through my transition and now I can call myself a woman. Since I was 10, I knew that I was not a man. I was a woman trapped inside of a man's body and now, after 11 years, 
I have completed my transition and I can finally call myself a woman. I feel so happy and free. I'm excited to see where life takes me now. I'm proud to finally call myself a woman. A guy asked me out a couple days ago, he had no interest in me in high school. When I was in high school I didn't date at all much. I was 400 pounds and I just was a girl who had friends by telling jokes and being funny. I had a crush on a guy who was friends with one of my best friend's boyfriend. I'm not going to mention any names but at the time a lot of the girls were into this guy I had a crush on. So anyway my best friend told her boyfriend then he told the guy I had a crush on. He said about me I would never date her if she was the last girl on earth. That was pretty hurtful to me but it wasn't the reason I lost 270 pounds. The reason I lost 270 pounds by age 21 was for health reasons of course. After I had lost the weight and got skin surgery this guy was already moved away and dropped out of college I heard. Two days ago he found me on a social network not going to say which one, and kept messaging me. He was saying how he couldn't even recognize me and how wonderful I looked. He asked me if I wanted to get together and for my phone number. I told him I'm not interested and never will be. I wouldn't go out with him if he was the last man on earth. Felt great to say that to him, remembering what he said about me in high school. When I was 10, I insulted a random lady on the phone and, totally got away with it. As a child, I sometimes liked to do telephone pranks. Usually these pranks were very tame. I would call a random number and creepily breathe into the phone while the other person would say hello? Hello. Until they eventually hung up and I moved on to the next number. One afternoon, though, some middle-aged lady got super triggered. I guess she was the 90s version of a Karen. When she realized I was a child, she gave me an angry lecture about how I was misbehaving and how it was unacceptable. I don't know what it was about her but, something about her but her yelping got me really triggered too. I was actually a very sweet and well-behaved boy and most adults loved me. Perhaps because of that, it really rubbed me the wrong way when she called me a snotty brat. I felt treated unfairly and wanted to give her a shitty day. So I laughed in a rude tone and said something like, yeah? Well you couldn't possibly know cause you're dumb as rocks. There was a short pause, she was clearly stunned by my words, before she totally freaked out. At this point, I let loose like my 10 year old tongue had rarely let loose before. I called her a nasty old witch, a dumb crack whore, a disease, you name it. Any insult that came to my mind I promptly hurled at her. Some of the things I called her were hilarious but some of them were 100% over the boundary, as in, I'd be angry if my child said them to an adult, let alone a stranger. At one point, the lady said, just wait you little brat, I have your number. I'll call your parents. At the time, most telephones weren't capable of knowing and showing the caller's number. It was still a pretty new technology and so when the lady claimed to have my landline phone number, the one I was calling from, I assumed it was just a bluff. Unfortunately, it wasn't. About 15 minutes later she called back and my mom picked up before I could stop her. At this point, I was genuinely terrified. Some of the things I had said were pretty horrible and I knew my mom would hate it. Surely, there would be some ugly punishment. Instead, however, I heard my mom reply in a polite but skeptical tone, No, you must have dialed the wrong number, my son would never do that. Like I said, I was usually a goody two-shoes who was always nice to everyone and brought home good grades from school. So, it made sense for my mom to be very skeptical, and yet, that angry lady was totally right about what I had done. After some back and forth, my mom called me and said, there's a lady here who claims that you called her before and insulted her horribly. Is that true? I gave her my most innocent smile and said, Hi? Insulted her? No. I was playing in my room, I didn't call anyone. My mom just said, Yeah, I thought so. Then she went back on the phone and said to the lady, I just asked my son and he says he didn't do any such thing. I also don't think he would ever do such a thing. 
Frankly, you seem like you've got some screws loose. Don't call us anymore, you probably misdialed or maybe you imagined the whole thing. I heard the lady screaming and shouting in anger and then my mom hung up on her and simply went back to her gardening work. I've never told my mom that that crazy lady actually hadn't been crazy and that she had been saying the truth. Like the episode, and, smash the subscribe button.